So you want to improve your English accent, but you're wondering, where do I start? Well, first of all, you need to be realistic. You're not going to sound fluent overnight, and you're very likely not going to get rid of your accent anytime soon. Accent reduction doesn't mean that you're going to get rid of your current accent. It just means that you will reduce it and sound clearer and more fluent. In this video, I'm going to talk about the five things you need to work on so that you can reduce your accent in no time. So sit back and keep watching this video. The number one thing you need to be aware of when working on accent reduction in English is the use of phantom vowels. They're not as scary as they sound, but phantom vowels are vowels that you'd put either at the beginning or at the end of a word because that's how the word is pronounced in your native language. For example, you might have heard a lot of Spanish speakers say Spain or España because that's how you'd pronounce the name of the country Spain in Spanish. So in English, the word Spain itself neither begins nor ends with a vowel, but a native Spanish speaker might add a vowel just because they're used to pronouncing the word in a certain way in their mother tongue. And if you're talking to a native English speaker by using phantom vowels, chances are you'll be misunderstood and you'll be asked to repeat the word again. Plus, you'll also very likely lose points in pronunciation during an English speaking exam. At the other hand of the spectrum, you have speakers of languages like French and Italian who don't pronounce the consonant H, period. Yes, in English, there are instances where we don't pronounce the letter H, like when a word beginning with the letter H is in the middle of a sentence. As an example, you'd say, Dan took his lunch to school today, or the word hour is pronounced hour and not hour. And the same goes for honor. It's honor, not honor. But those are exceptions. If you were to tell a native English speaker, I'm hungry, they won't be able to tell if you're actually angry or hungry. Bottom line here, you need to be very conscious of the use of phantom vowels and avoid using them if you want to reduce your accent. As a general rule, I'd say don't think in your native language when you're speaking English. And never assume that pronouncing Pronouncing something in your native language is the correct way to pronounce a word in English. Which brings me to the next point. Avoid pronouncing English words that look similar to words in your language in the way that you'd pronounce them in your native language. This is a common mistake I hear a lot of people make, especially speakers of Romance languages like Italian, French and Spanish. Take the French word champagne. In English, it's champagne or gastronomie. In English, it's gastronomy and it's spelled differently. And even Greek speakers do this as well because unsurprisingly, English has borrowed a lot of words from ancient and modern Greek. I've so often heard Greek speakers say psychology instead of psychology because it comes from the Greek word psychologia and in Greek you pronounce the psi sound but it's completely wrong in English. Pro tip for you, when learning new vocabulary, make sure to also learn the correct English pronunciation. You can do this by typing the word on cambridgedictionary.com and listening to either the British or the American English pronunciation. Worst case scenario, just type the word into Google Translate and press the little speaker button to listen to the word. I know it's very tempting to look at a new word in a different language and just say or think to yourself, oh, it's basically the same word that we have in French, and then pronounce the word as if it were a French word. So when you do learn a new word, practice pronouncing it out loud. You can start by opening your mouth really, really wide to make sure that you're pronouncing the correct sounds and also think about the intonations. Pronunciation is all about muscle memory and practice. You can do that by shadowing native English speakers when you're watching a video, for instance. Listen to a sentence or to a word 
pause the video and say it out loud many, many times until you get it right. This might sound silly, but you should also record yourself speaking English. A lot of the times we think we're speaking clearly and correctly, but we're not. By recording yourself, you'll be able to listen in on any pronunciation mistakes that you're making and make improvements. My next tip for you is to practice individual sounds, in particular, the sounds that you find the most difficult to pronounce. That could be the R sound, like round. I've heard a lot of people pronounce it as round or the infamous th sounds and its variations. Maybe you're struggling to pronounce the uh sound in sit and the e sound in seat. Now, I'll be making videos about these individual sounds with practical exercises, but in the meantime, you need to first identify the most difficult sounds for you and then practice them. This is extremely important because imagine that you're having a serious conversation with, I don't know, a client, and you keep saying the word shit instead of sheet. For the sake of an example, imagine that you're struggling to pronounce the e uh and the e sounds. Try saying, I saw Susie sitting in the shoe shine shop. Where she sits, she shines, and where she shines, she sits. You can first start by saying it very slowly. I saw Susie sitting in a shoe shine shop. Where she sits, she shines, and where she shines, she sits and then progressively faster and faster until you can say it perfectly. Let's try this one together. She sells seashells by the seashore. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Yes, it sounds awkward, I know, and ridiculous, but tongue twisters have been proven to clarify the pronunciation of words. They stretch and strengthen the muscles that you use when speaking, and they also help you practice the sounds that you're struggling to pronounce. Check out the description box below for more tongue twisters and let me know in your comments which one you tried. Another thing you need to practice daily is linking sounds. I have an entire video about it called How to Understand Fast English, so make sure to check it out for more specific examples. In a nutshell, native English speakers use a lot of connected speech. A native English speaker would say, could you give me your pen? Instead of, could you give me your pen? You're by no means obliged to use contractions or linking in daily speech when you're in a professional setting or giving a speech. But for everyday casual conversation, you will sound more fluent if you use linking sounds. Let's practice a few together. How would you say this sentence? Would you like a cup of coffee? Here we can link would you and say would you. And then you can also link like a and cuppa. All together now you could say would you like a cup of coffee? The best way to practice linking is watching movies or TV shows in English with English subtitles. This will allow you to listen to natural English speech and the subtitles act as a guide by helping you to understand each individual word. Again, shameless self-promotion, if you want to learn English by watching lots and lots of TV shows, I have a video where I recommend the top 10 Netflix series for learning English. So check out this link over here when you're done with this video. Now a common difficulty that you guys might have is pronouncing words that end in ed. And here we're normally referring to the past simple tense and the past participle of regular verbs, but also to adjectives. For example, wanted is pronounced wanted and not wanted and ended and not ended. We therefore pronounce ed in three different ways, id, t, and d. When we say words like tainted or tended, the sound here is known as voiced. But when we say words like watched or hoped, we use the t sound when pronouncing the letters ed. And here the sound is unvoiced. In other cases, we pronounce the ed sound as d when the sound is voiced. So here you'd say she played the piano or he swallowed a pill. You wouldn't say played or played. 
If you want to reduce your accent, learning to correctly pronounce words ending in ed is extremely important, and it will help you sound near fluent and maybe even fluent. So to recap, if you want to reduce your accent, you need to be aware of and avoid phantom vowels, stop pronouncing English words that are similar to those in your language in a way that you'd pronounce them in your native tongue, practice difficult sounds with the help of tongue twisters, learn how to link words through connected speech, and finally, master pronouncing words ending in ed. That's all from me, and once again, thank you so much for watching, and remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to my channel for more English lessons.